My very first guest on my holiday special is the musical director of Six at West End, um, Katie Richardson. Hi, Katie. Hi. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. Really good. That is awesome. Let me uh, first start off by saying that I've never met someone with a British accent before. Oh, have you not? <laughs> and I've got a really, really British one. <laughs> so I'm like living my best life right now, finally getting to talk with someone with a British accent because I'm very yes. close of British accents. I love them. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I hope you like mine. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> I love it. So... About, so first, before we go into the holidays and talking about the cool, maybe some cool stuff that you do during the holidays, I want to know, did you have any prior knowledge to uh, the story of Six before you jumped onto the project? Um, as in, like, the history element? Yeah. Yeah, so we, we I, I think I learned about it in school, but I don't remember knowing a lot. Like, the rhyme, the divorce beheaded died rhyme is really famous here. Like, I definitely learned that in school. And I remember, I think I did a project on... Catherine of Aragon maybe where we had to like fill a shoebox full of things that like related to her when I was in high school but that was kind of it I didn't know a lot for sure yeah to be totally honest with you when I first saw like photos and tiktoks of it I thought it was like about a girl group like getting big I didn't think I didn't know <laughs> about a history like actual like British history I thought it was like all about like a girl group that's like starts small and gets to like <laughs> I mean it kind of is that too it's like a mix, <laughs> a yeah. mix of the two. yeah 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 <laughs> I honestly the first time I ever saw like the press photos of it I thought it was Fifth Har- like Fifth Harmony a little bit but like a different <laughs> version I think that means that we've done our job to be honest yeah <laughs> Uh, were you expecting a huge fan base uh, from the West End fans? Because it is pretty big over there. Um, short answer, no. Like, it's what? kind of all been a crazy blur that has been amazing. But, like, I've never done a show before where, like, the musicians are recognized as well as the cast. So that's, like, a really new thing and it's really unusual. Um, and even, like, my friends that work in the technical departments in sound and stuff have been, like, recognized on the tube as, like, oh, my God, you work for six and stuff. So that element is is really unusual. But it's really nice that it's not just the onstage people that uh, get recognized in that way. And I think that's a really, really positive thing about it. Um, but, yeah, we did not expect it <laughs> to, to go yeah, like this. That was a big yeah, surprise. The music that makes a show a show is so, like, the people behind it, are they're, like, the superheroes of the show. They're like the full on superheroes that sort of make West End or Broadway show the show. Yeah. So what do you think makes Six so special? Um, I think when we were first creating it, we had this like relatively young creative team and production team and we all just, sometimes it just happens when all the people creating something just click and we all just sort of seem to like instinctively know what everyone what everyone's goal was and we're all just really like unified in creating that goal so I think that's why like I you know sometimes you get productions where like the choreography and the music departments aren't seeing eye to eye and, and whatever or blah, blah blah and that just didn't we were just really lucky and that it didn't happen on this and so I think that's kind of partly why we were just all really like had a shared vision from the start um and had some really amazing people so I, th- I think that's why, I don't know. <laughs> that's why yeah. it's so special to me, for sure. Like all, all the people that work on the show are really good friends of mine and have been for a few years now. And you'd think that after, you know, working together all the time for two and a half years that we'd hate each other, but we don't. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's why it's so special to me. Have you guys like kept in touch during like quarantine and stuff? Yeah, um, we like have semi-regular like meetups and obviously, you know, just text and FaceTime like you do with your like normal mm-hmm. mates. So, so yeah, yeah, we have sometimes work sometimes not work (laughs) yeah is being the musical director for a show like this difficult in any way yeah um it's it's hard because um I mean musical directing is like a really varied job anyway um but it's hard so there's always challenges with it whatever but with with this show because I'm in costume and on stage that's like an added challenge because usually and also the music doesn't stop like usually in a show you kind of you're in the pit you do a song then you have a scene where you get to have like a bit of a break and yeah. be off for two minutes or whatever but in this we're always on and like having to obviously like control what our reactions are and stuff like that um so it's like kind of doing the job of being a musical director and conductor or whatever which is hard enough anyway whilst also <laughs> trying to like look like a lady in waiting you know so yeah, yeah that is a, that is a um a challenging element 
is conducting really difficult because it looks like I would be very overwhelmed if uh, <laughs> um, I were the one standing there with the conductor thing and trying to make sure everyone's in check. I think the difficult thing about it is you are really aware that, well, actually, no, you're not. Like, I always say, like, a three scary thing about musical directing or conducting is that, like, everyone is watching you and you're in con you're um, not in control so much as, like, you're, uh, everyone's looking to you for leadership. So, like, the, like, the cast are, the technical departments are, the band are. So it's, like, a lot of people that are physically watching you to watch for your cue. But actually, in the moment, like, I don't really think about that very much. Mm -hmm. So... Like, yeah you kind of like in the moment you're not aware of it you just think like I've just got to do what I've got to do um I mean conducting is difficult but I think it's it's no I think playing instruments is harder yeah personally but um I'm lucky that I had a really good conducting teacher and stuff when I was at college so I think I think like I had a really good opportunity to find it easier <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> So what have been, what has been some of the highlights of working in a successful show like Six and out like on a West End production in general? Um, there's been a few to be honest. One of my a highlight that really sticks out in my mind was the first sing along we did. We did like a sing along performance of Six where obviously the audience was all allowed to sing along and like when House of Holbein started they all just like jumped up and started dancing in their seats and everything like that and that that was sort of before the show had got properly big and we were like oh a sing-along will be funny like maybe a couple of people will sing along mm -hmm. and it was really overwhelming because everyone was singing along and it was so loud and people oh, came yeah. in cos people came in costume like for cosplay and everything and we just literally had no expectation of any of that so that was just a really a well overwhelming emotional day for all of us because we were just like look at this thing like look how big it's got and you know what we've achieved um also when we um we were nominated for Olivier's and got to perform at the Olivier's, which is like the yeah. London version of the Tony. So that was, that was a really big day and a really special day. Um, and even though we didn't win any, like we just felt so grateful to be there and perform at yeah. the Royal Albert Hall, which is like kind of a bucket list thing anyway. So I say those are the really, the two really big highlights that stick out in my mind. It's like two events, you know? Yeah. Would you ever want, hopefully, like, when this whole COVID thing is, like, done, would you ever want to come to the States to see the show on Broadway? Well, I actually was in New York to see it at the press night on Broadway. Like, I was oh. in New York that week, um, and I was supposed to be seeing it <laughs> for, the, for the press night that got cancelled. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, whenever that ends up being, I'll get to go next time <laughs> and actually see it at press yeah. night. I will say six is on my list of shows that I really want to see. Of course, I was going to go out to New York, but due to yeah. this, I am unable to. Uh, because when I go to New York, it's all about Broadway and all about going to shows and stuff. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so six was on my list, and then... Yeah. I had tickets for so many things that week as well. Like, I saw, I managed to see Moulin Rouge. I saw the last show of Moulin Rouge before it all oh, fixed closed. But I had tickets for Jack a Little Pill and Mean Girls and Six, and I didn't see any of them. <laughs> I did a podcast um, with uh, all of the cast members, not at, at the same time, but all of the cast members of um, Mean Girls on Broadway. Oh, yeah? So I did, like, Erica Henningsen oh, cool. and uh, Kate Rockwell, Gray Henson, Taylor Louderman. It's going to be so up for cool. Thanksgiving uh, ah, week. Ah, I'll look out for that. Uh, and it's all going to be out the entire week of Thanksgiving. So Awesome. I'll look out for that. So it's I love that pretty, show. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, did you see uh, Desi Oakley when she was Jenna on West End or no? Uh, no, I was. I think I was doing six that week. So I was, I was at work, so I couldn't go. That's the annoying thing about working on a show is you don't get to see as many shows. Yeah, I talked to her recently and she was telling me about how she kind of came in and saved the day over there at West End and it was like a huge. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was because yeah. I think I think all of they had Jenna and then the two cover Jennas and they were all sick. Mm -hmm. And like, too, like couldn't even get out of bed sick. So yeah, she really did save the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So besides the love that you have for musical theater, I want to talk about every a lot of people's favorite time of the year, the holidays. <laughs> so what have you? What are some of your personal favorite uh, holiday uh, parts about the holiday season? Um, see, I kind of love 
like the holidays anyway and I think I'm particularly in love with them this year because we just need like whatever jewelry we can get so um I I was gonna say the main thing for me is the food I love Christmas food like I love mince pies which I don't know do you get them in the US I don't know what that is okay I am obsessed with them they're like little pastry sweet pastry pies like like cupcake size yeah and they have we call it mince meat but it's not meat at all it's like um it's like a like ra- raisins and other dried fruit with like spices. Ooh, well, and that's basically the filling. So it tastes like like really heavily spiced, like Christmassy, like cinnamon and stuff. I love them. They're so good. But you can only get them. Actually, I think you can get them in the shops now. But like you can only get them in the holidays. So probably yeah. them. I love them. <laughs> uh, do you have any like traditions that you do for the holidays with like your family and friends? Um. So normally my fam- with my family, it's just, it's just the four of us. Like we don't, my extended family lives all over the UK and we never really did the like traveling for a big family Christmas thing. On Christmas day, we always used to go like between Christmas and New Year to see family. Yeah. So um, yeah, it would always be just us. Um, and for some reason, my family does like pillowcases at the end of the bed for Father Ooh. Christmas instead of stockings. Um, I, like I don't it. really know why. <laughs> I guess you get more presents in the pillowcase. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's so, actually so creative. I never thought. I never heard about that. That's actually yeah. Crazy. I don't know who started that. Like, I don't know if my parents started that or if like they got it from their parents. I don't know. But yeah, that's what we always do. Um, and then on Boxing Day, we always go on a really big walk, like, um, with all of the like a bunch of other families that live in the village I grew up in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like eat um eat turkey curry and like leftover roast potatoes and whatever. So yeah. bring in Christmas. Yeah, exactly. So what are the holidays like in the UK? Because I've never been over there. I've always wanted to go over there. What so well, like is what's it like during the holiday season in the UK? Well I guess the big thing is like we don't have Thanksgiving. Oh. Yeah, so like like Christmas is the is the big event. So that's the guy I guess like the main difference. So like from I mean literally like they start putting Christmas stuff in the shops before Halloween but like after Halloween's over it's like everywhere is so Christmassy like you can't walk in in any shop without living like a Christmas tree or whatever um and yeah people love it but like Christmas is the big thing there's like Christmas specials on the TV um all the old films like all that sort of thing most the vast majority of people take off like from like the 23rd of December till probably the 3rd of January just book off work so everyone just has like two weeks yeah off um obviously in the theatre we don't get to do that but yeah so it's good but yeah the, the big thing is we don't have thanksgiving so like christmas is the really really big deal yeah although we have thanksgiving here christmas is still up before halloween even starts yeah like, it's I, crazy it's, isn't it yeah i was at the store like a couple of weeks ago looking for halloween decorations for my cousin and i found christmas trees and ornaments yeah no. and you're like i want pumpkins <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> like for, and there's some stores. It's like there's like a whole Halloween section, and then like an aisle over. Then they have like yeah. an aisle of like random stuff, like the sale stuff, just to like maybe as like a divider. Then the other side is like yeah, it's like that here too. It's like <laughs> like the inflatables that you put outside your house. Or yeah, like new things. It's like you blow it up and you sit it on the front seat of your car. Oh wow! Have you seen those on TikTok? No, I, I haven't. TikTok on social media, it's like you blow it up. It's like a miniature like like inflatable kind of thing they have like mm-hmm. the Grinch they have like a Snoopy one they have a stand to mm-hmm. one and you put it in the front seat of your car and it looks and you buckle it up so it's like you're uh driving with like a like a like an inflatable thing in your car <laughs> <Wow>. uh, <laughs> uh would you consider yourself a good gift giver um I think so but I don't know <laughs> I like giving like a, like experiences instead of items so like tickets to stuff or like um I also like quite a big fan of giving people subscription boxes so like last year I got my mom like a box subscription no a book subscription so she got like a different book once a month cool. um so yeah I go into like that sort of thing rather than like a you know an item um yeah. yeah. Do you ever like, for example, like if you were to give someone something like tickets to a show on West at West End, is it on West End or at West End? How do you well, guys usually say on? Um, no, it, it's technically in the West End. In the West because End. Because okay. the West End is an area of London, but everyone says on, but it's on Broadway and in the West End. I always get them right. Wrong. Yeah, I wasn't sure how you guys phrase it because I was doing my research and th- like they said it at West End, on West End, in West mm-hmm. End. Like they're all every verb possible. <laughs> right. 
was put in between the work like in, like right before yeah. the work towards West End. So I wanted to make sure I it's technically it. in the West End. So it's just technically yeah. yeah, technically. <laughs> um, so have you ever like gotten someone tickets to see a show in the West End and you're like dang, I actually want to see that show. Yeah, all the time. And then what I end up doing is I'll get like a pair of tickets and give it to them and then be like, okay, but you have to take me. <laughs> I've done that to my mom so many times. Like which shows have you gotten her tickets to that you ended up coming along? Um, I got her tickets with Miss Saigon Ooh. and I just went with her, yeah. Um, she also did the same thing to me, but with the ballet. <laughs> uh -huh. So she got me tickets to the ballet and then I took her. So I guess it works both ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are some of your favorite songs to listen to during the holiday season? Uh, that's all. I actually really love, um, I mean, you've got to love All I Want For Christmas Is You. Like you have to, there's no option other than that. I oh. really love the, the Pentatonix Christmas album. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I listen to that quite a lot. Um, and any like older like Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, D you know, Dean D Martin sort of ones, like I love all of those as well. Yeah, it's like when you hear like a, like for example, like a Frank Sinatra like Christmas song, it kind of, mm -hmm. you immediately think of like walking through like a big city. Yeah, yeah. And like looking and like window shopping and looking at all the Christmas trees, like that's what I think of. Exactly, exactly. And it feels really like nostalgic. Yeah, and you um, get like a chill, like I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, being like cold outside. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, probably those ones. So describe your 2020 in one word, and then describe what you hope your 2021 will be in one word. One word. Okay. Uh, unexpected. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, 2021. Oh. Uh, I'm just gonna say positive. Let's hope. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to hope for. <laughs> yeah, hopefully West End will be back and yeah, Broadway okay. will be back and we'll be mm -hmm. able to bring the joy that is exactly. the theater back to the world so people can are able to show their, the talents they've worked their whole lives for. Yeah, totally. To have this experience on stage to show like what they're made of. <laughs> yeah. Totally. It's hoping. This has been Katie Richardson, musical director of the show Six in, in the West End. That's it. <laughs>